All right, so I'm going to give uh, something that I've never done before, and that is a full review of a TV series that I have been watching for over eight seasons, um, something that I've been also reading uh, via comic books, so I am a fan of, and I want you guys to understand that I am not just a, a random TV viewer who is trying to give you my input without being fully educated on characters and character motivations. Um, okay, so the season 8 finale of The Walking Dead just premiered. Uh, I just watched it uh, in its entirety. And obviously the big news with this season uh, finale has been the fact that it will transition into Fear of the Walking Dead with a major character, uh, Morgan. Uh, anybody who's watched the series, you know, The Walking Dead on AMC from beginning, we know that Morgan is one of the first characters introduced in the post-apocalyptic uh, zombie world. He is an individual character who helped uh, usher in the character Rick Grimes into this new world and basically help jump and kickstart the series. All right, so where do I start? Uh, this season finale. Okay. While I do appreciate the, the slow moments that we got uh, with characters expressing how they feel, their emotional status, where they are, uh, the build-up to the eventual war with Negan, the climax of the war with Negan, I, I enjoyed it, but it felt empty to me. Everything was all too convenient and contrived. There were... It seemed to me as if the writers of this season had exhausted all other options taken from the comics and, they, and couldn't do something and make it original and change it to their liking. Uh, they didn't have enough confidence to move forward with doing something different. Uh, everything was half measured from the, 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 the ultimate climax of the character Morgan's, um, uh, his entire story arc for this past season felt like it was a safe venture. Everything felt safe because it seemed like the writers weren't confident and their ideas and where they were going. And so it felt like to me, fundamentally, everything was just so convenient and buddy buddy and all smiles. Um, for they, they kept the entire season leading Morgan's character, okay, the, the character that is Morgan. They kept leading his entire character to have you, the audience, believe that there are only two ways you could see the character Morgan making it out of this war. Either he is killed or he has a character such as um, Carol or Rick or a major character end his life for him because he kept feeling like as if he, they kept making mention that he felt like he was tortured. He couldn't die. Um, the villains of the story couldn't kill him. The dead couldn't kill him. So they, they, they kept teasing the audience with this idea and this notion that maybe the, the people who love him would be able to end his misery. Nope, we don't get that. In fact, Morgan all of a sudden after, mind you, a character in Jesus who is very influential in the comic books, but on the show, we hadn't seen him since before the mid-season finale. He pops up out of nowhere, says a few words to Morgan, and now Morgan has this new ideology where he can, he can um, maybe see past all of the post-traumatic stress that he's been dealing with when it comes to the, 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 this world. Way too convenient, way too easy, way too cheesy. 
okay? Then you have the kid who we all surmised after the writers foolishly killed Carl Grimes. Spoiler alert, sorry for anybody who hasn't watched the show, but they foolishly killed Carl Grimes. They named this kid essentially Carl Grimes 2.0, who's, who's taken on the Carl Grimes characteristics from the comics. He all of a sudden now just, oh, washes his hands. He no longer needs to go on a killing spree. He no longer is this serial killer in training. He's just conveniently healed from all of this. Okay, Ezekiel, major character in the comic book. This episode had jack shit to do. All right. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. There were things, there was even a scene with the character Rosita and Eugene, which felt so out of place. I know they were probably going for a ha 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 ha, laughing, jokey, jokey. There's a scene, and I kid you not, guys. Eugene does something, which is very pivotal to the war. Right? It's the end. Rosita walks up to him, and out of nowhere, you know, rather than thank him, rather than have an emotional connection, because the person that these two people lost in Abraham as a result of, of Negan would catapult them to be emotionally inclined to be tied together. No, Rosita does what? She hauls off half cock and punches him. And it's like, oh. I forgive you for everything that's gone on. And she walks off. This was absolute utter bullshit, lazy writing. And you know what? This makes total sense as to why Scott Gimple stepped down and moved on to a quote unquote new position. And it also makes sense as to why Laura Cohen, AKA Maggie, is in the dispute that she's, she's in. I know it has been listed as because of financial reasons, but I have to have the question after watching this season finale, was it just a little bit more than just financial reasons why she is refusing to sign back on? Maybe it could be because the direction they have chosen to go with her character and Daryl's character, and I, I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but it makes utterly no sense to the central foundation of these two characters when it coincides to the original group it makes no sense and it's all fan service when it comes to the character of Negan this guy has been able to survive some of the most ridiculously infantile things right Situations where no one else normally in this, the world of The Walking Dead would be able to survive. This guy seems to get out unscathed. And it just seems like this entire episode was catered to justifying Negan's survival. Yes, spoiler alert, Negan survives. If you didn't read the comic books, but the way that the show did it was so utterly campy so cheesy and they cut so many corners writing and, it, and and listen i'm not trying to sit there and take a a complete crap on the entire series but this episode there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be confused and say well no they had some meaningful dialogue so the episode was so amazing but this episode was absolutely half cock lazy and, and it was so apparent that it was lazy with even when the, the certain choppy scenes, the ending scenes. There was a scene with Daryl and a character uh, who had caused so much strife in this series. Made absolutely no sense to the ending scene with Daryl and Maggie. Okay, because even if the character that was Daryl came to the realization that the character of Maggie was that they needed to eliminate Negan, there's no way he would have allowed a certain character to survive, right? To just go over scot-free. 
No way. Because the whole point was Negan had ushered in a completely different ideology for these two characters in Maggie and Daryl. So it, it wouldn't have mattered who it was. If you were associated with Negan, you would have had to go. Mind you, a, a character who we hadn't seen all season showed up last week to usher in a character's, like, I, I don't want to say, um, you know what, I'm going to put it this way. A character last week was, was reintroduced as a central focus for another character being uh, caught in trying to play both sides. Tell me why that character completely lives unscathed, in fact, has a an eye-to-eye -eye contact with the character Terra and is universally just accepted in this new regime. Meanwhile, she made it very clear in the prior episode how she was all for what Negan's life, Negan's uh, rules were, what his ideology was, and everything about it made absolutely no sense. And I just have to be completely honest with you. The ratings for this show has, has gone down drastically. Um, ever since they decided to kill, spoiler alert, Glenn and Abraham the way that they did, I've spoken to people who have said the show has just lost its muster. It's lost its creativity. Everything is just regurgitated and just... Uh, we dis distributed in a different fashion, but you can ultimately tell it's the same formula. And unfortunately, I feel like this is the way that this finale was. Um, and what's really bothering me, what really worries me, is that they kind of held a lot of this new campaign stuff until yesterday. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, United States Television, they kept they didn't talk about talk about um, uh, a reset, an automatic reset of the series. And when you start to hear that kind of, uh, of, of, of talk, that lets you and leads you to know that the executives, studio executives understand and know that the direction that they originally went down wasn't working. And they kind of tease with this whole, well, we're going to change it up and switch it up. And we're going to go down a different path to kind of tease you and to bring it in. I, I kid you not, guys. There's a scene with Morgan, very significant character, has never had any sort of interaction with a character named Jadis. Okay. Uh, in this season, all of a sudden, he is talking to Jadis and Jadis is just like out of nowhere I'm going to go with you and Morgan conveniently says no I'm going I need to go be by myself and we know what that's about that's to bridge in fear of the walking dead there were things in this episode that were completely sloppy um completely simplistic and it made no sense to the central core development of the characters that have existed on The Walking Dead. And there's no way that anybody can tell me differently. Okay? And, and I'm not trying to uh, be the major buzzkill here. But the facts are the facts. Last season was probably one of the worst seasons The Walking Dead has ever had. They had bottle episodes. It felt extremely long and drawn out. This season was supposed to pick up with action. They did action, but they forgot about character development. And even in the last three episodes, right? The last three episodes leading up to the finale felt like they were finally getting back to the original roots of this series, which was um, not so much the relationship or the interaction between the people who are alive and the walkers, the people who are dead, but more so the people who are alive Versus the people who are trying to survive. Because that's basically at its core what The Walking Dead is about. It's about two different types of people. People who live and people who survive. And the people who live in this world, who just exist in this world, tend to be those that uh, have a singular 
focus that they they take the easy road out and those that survive are those that have to live with the consequences of their actions and what they do the last couple episodes have felt like the original walking dead series the first few seasons of the walking dead but this season finale was absolute utterly abysmal it was horrid, it was wretched, and I'm not trying to be the guy who sits there and, and says something just to say it. It is the truth. There were so many incomplete inconsistencies when it came to characters that you cannot sit there and say that, wow. E even when Scott Gimple was talking about how they were going to leave you off with a cliffhanger, the cliffhanger itself felt like an incomplete scene it was shot and and that, and that all of these things are re major red flags you know continuing on into next season and you know one of the unfortunate things about tv series once you start to lose the audience which the walking dead has been losing nine times out of ten you don't regain the, that audience it just either even kills or you continue to lose your 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 core central base core central fan base put it that way and i honestly see that this show this season finale from even from people i i just been seeing on my twitter account there are a lot of people who see what i saw and they're kind of just originally they're, they're just saying i'm washing my hands of the series I might check out Fear of the Walking Dead because of Morgan, a character who out of nowhere, out of any character you could have ever have, bridged the gap between the Fear of the Walking Dead and the Walking Dead. You chose Morgan, a guy who you built last season, the season before last, and this season on having a major focal point on the end of the war between the saviors and the survivors. <sighs> I can go on and on and on, but I'm gonna cut this out. I've gone way too, I've gone way over my <laughs> scheduled time to talk about a series. I just wanted to give you guys my my particular thoughts on it. Um, it is what it is, I'm out.